Hey, hey, party people, and Merry Christmas to those of you who celebrate it. In this video, I'm going to go over painting little heads. I have a faces playlist where I get into the nitty gritty of proportions and how to draw lips and angles like three quarter view versus profile view. And then I also have a video on how to mix skin tones and that's all in the faces playlist. But in those videos, I scaled the drawings up a little bit just so the camera would pick them up better so you guys could see better. Same thing with my hair tutorials. I have, um, I think, half a dozen hair tutorials. And most of those tutorials are done with marker, but the basics of hair rendering are the same for paint. You know, where you place your highlights, where you place your shadows, you know, how to develop texture. All those things are about the same. So if you want deep dives into hair, go check out my hair playlist. But again, for the sake of visibility and, you know, camera work and all that stuff, the heads are a little bit on the big side. But I say this often, my standard fashion figure is about 13 inches. You know, fashion designers, we don't really paint or draw that big. Like we can do like large gesture figure drawing, but for design communication, we don't often draw very big. So you kind of have to get in the habit of being able to render these little itty bitty heads. You know, you can tell how small they are because I have really little hands. Um, <laughs> my friends kind of tease me all the time that my hands are kind of small. And look at how small the heads are in comparison to my hand. So let's talk in this video more about how to work on such a teeny tiny scale. The first thing is gonna be the tools that you use. Okay. I am currently painting with a number four round. And throughout this video, I'm using number four, number three, and I think a zero size round brushes. I'm not using any other kind of brush. And if you need a primer on brushes, I have a whole video I did recently called Intro to Brushes where I go over shapes and sizes and what all that means. But Use smaller brushes, of course, but not only use smaller brushes, but use brushes that have a good point. Okay, As I went over in my Intro to Brushes video, squirrel hair brushes do not hold a nice point. I recently got a squirrel and I'm, <laughs> I'm irritated at how moppish it is. It doesn't hold a point. So the brushes that I'm using today they're all rounds that hold a good point. So not only are they small, but they hold a small point. And, you know, you could be thinking, well, if they're all about holding a good point, then I can use any size. Yeah, yes or no. <laughs> because you don't want too big of a brush. Because if your brush holds a lot of paint, one little slip up and like all that paint that's being held in the brush head could just kind of gush out. So you also want to control how much paint is in your brush. So smaller brushes, zeros, one, two, three, four size range, round size with a really nice point. Synthetics make a nice point. Sable, uh, one of my favorites is a Sable Synthetic Blend from Winsor & Newton. That one has a nice point. There, there are a lot of options out there. I'm gonna be doing a brush testing follow-up video in the next year. I always use a 0.3 size mechanical pencil and a super skinny eraser. The super skinny eraser is not really that high quality of an eraser. Okay, it's, it doesn't erase really great, but it gets into the teeny tiny little spaces. If you watch my videos, then you know that my two favorite erasers are the Pentel Click and the Tombow Mono. And I use the Pentel Click Sticky Eraser for most of my erasing. And then if I really need to get into the tight spaces, I will use the itty bitty little Tombow uh, Mono. 
when you're drawing teeny tiny little faces or in general teeny tiny details, it's actually much easier to use hot press watercolor paper than it is to use cold press or rough paper. Because the texture of the cold press can kind of fight with your drawing. And if you need things to be really precise, like, you know, eyebrows and little teeny tiny lips and such, it can be easier to just have a paper where you don't have to fight with the texture. I am actually using cold press paper now. I'm using Arches 300 GSM, 140 pound cold press watercolor paper. It is one of my favorite watercolor papers. And I'm doing this so I can show you that you can, you work carefully and you practice, uh, work a little bit more slowly, you can get a nice precise detail with the texture cold press paper. But if you're just starting out, the hot press will probably be easier for you. I did not draw freehand draw these on this nice paper. I never do that for super precise work. I always draw everything out on regular paper, make all my mistakes, do all my erasing and redrawing, and then use a light box to trace off my finished pencil drawings onto the watercolor paper. Because I don't like, I don't want to do a lot of erasing on my final painting paper because it really messes up the texture. And I don't, like, a lot of the time, especially with textured cold press paper, not all the graphite comes off. Because you got to, like, really get in the teeny tiny spaces. So if you er erase aggressively enough to get rid of the graphite, then you've killed the texture. You've ruined the surface of the paper. So I like to do all my rough drafts and then trace my final drawing onto the paper before I paint. You'll see that I draw, like, really basic shapes. Okay, with the head of hair, I draw just the basic shape of the style. I draw one single line for the shape of the eyebrow. I don't start off by drawing all these individual eyelashes and all this stuff. I keep the initial drawing as simple as possible. Only the lines needed to know where to put the paint. Okay, first of all, like, you're probably going to paint over all those details, so you're going to have to redraw them anyway, and that's extra work. Secondly, I don't want a lot of graphite to be smearing around while I'm painting, okay? I'm really conscious of watching out for graphite smearing a lot. That's why you'll see that extra piece of paper I slide under my hand to protect whatever drawing is there. Because I like to rest my hand on the table, as most of us do, Whenever I'm painting, first of all, I make sure that the thing that I might cover with my hand is dry, and then I'll lay a little scrap piece of paper over it, and then I'll use that so I'm not smearing paint, I'm not smearing graphite, I'm keeping all of my drawing clean. Another thing I like to do that has nothing to do with tiny heads, but everything to do with painting, is use that scrap for testing colors. I like never lay down my brush without testing up the color first. You know, what's that saying? Measure twice, cut once. That's me. I like do just like, a, it's become automatic for me to just take a scrap, test, make sure it's the color I want, or make sure that my paintbrush is clean if I'm just trying to lay down some water. Saves so much heartache. It's like when I'm working in Adobe Illustrator or Photoshop, it's like every five moves, it's like a automatic command S. I'm constantly saving as I'm going. Because you can always command Z a bunch of times and go backwards and change things. But, you know, command S, man. Just make it like, a, like an automatic thing that you do, okay? Test what's on your brush before you put it down on your final paper. Keep saving your document as you're working. Just good habits to just have ingrained in your hands. Okay. So while I'm painting eyes, okay, tips on painting eyes for small faces. First of all, if you want to paint blue eyes or green eyes, you know, 
I see this all the time where people use like super bright blue, super bright green, and it just looks so jarring because, you know, people have bright blue eyes and bright green eyes and I've seen them, but they're not as bright as you think they are. Okay. So calm down. Go look at some pictures of non-photoshopped nice blue eyes and try to match that color. And they're actually going to be a lot duller than you originally thought. I will typically do a blue-gray for bright blue eyes. And they read blue. When you are painting the eyes, don't make the colored part like a perfect circle. Because when you look at someone's eyes that are open naturally, you don't see the full circle of the color. You only see that when they're just like wide-eyed and startled or shocked or scared. You're not gonna see the whole round. So make sure that you're, it looks more like a U, like a semicircle than a perfect circle. So what I like to do is take a little brush and I like to drop down like a tiny droplet of paint and then just sort of smash the top part. Make sure it's not like a perfect round bead because that can look really weird. Now with eyes, the only, <laughs> those of you who've watched my channel a lot know that I kind of mostly totally hate gel pens. And <laughs> this is the only time I really like using a gel pen is when I put that little shine spot in the eye. I just take my gel pen, make sure the ink is flowing nicely, and just put one dot off center in the colored part of the eye. Just one dot in each eye. Now, if they have a dark brown black eye, then you're not going to see the pupil which is the little black part in the very center of your eye. But if you have a light blue, light green eye, you're gonna see that. So I just go in there with a pencil and just draw in that little dot. See, but that little white gel pen dot kind of gives the eye life, don't you think? Speaking of eyes, don't forget that your eyes need to be pointing at the same thing, so really be careful of that. <laughs> okay, I mean, I've had students where, for some reason, every time they try to get their model to look straight, they end up looking cross-eyed. So I'm like, look, if they're looking off to the side, it's fine. Looking off to the side is not distracting. Making a model cross-eyed is distracting, okay? You don't want to distract from the clothes. She looks off to the side, it's fine. It's not distracting, she's just looking over there, which is nothing abnormal about that, right? You may be wondering why I keep bouncing around from head to head to head, and that's because I need to wait for layers of paint to dry in between steps. And this is especially important the smaller, more detailed the item you're painting is. Okay, because, you know, you don't have a lot of space to get all painterly and wet on wet and get all blendy and stuff. And so I will paint one layer of skin and then I'll wait for it to dry by painting something else and then paint a layer of shadow, paint something else, come back and paint another layer of shadow and keep progressing in that way. And a lot of the time with spaces so small that even if you paint something next to it, it you can mess up your painting. I've already done that a couple of times. You may have picked up on that. In those cases, what you need to do is take a clean, mostly dry brush, dab the mistaken paint, you know, while it's still wet, just dab at it, and the paint will suck it up, clean out your brush, add a little bit of water, kind of mix it into the paper, and then again, like, scoop it up with a dry brush, and you should be able to pick up the mistake. Let that space of paper dry, come back, and paint again. So that's why I keep bouncing around. It's like, let this portion dry, let this portion dry. And if I was drawing a single figure, if you watch my basic wash illustration tutorial, you'll have noticed that I'll do the face, and then I'll draw the feet, and then I'll work on the blouse, and then, you know, I bounce around, so I'm letting these sections of paint dry. 
But, you know, since I'm doing all these individual heads, I'm just bouncing around on all these heads. Please ignore the figure on the top right corner. I messed up royally, so I stopped working on that one. <gasps> that one was beyond fixing with a little dab and water. Yeah, good times. Please give this video a thumbs up if it was helpful or fun, entertaining, all those good things. Share, subscribe, drop me all your questions in the comments section below. Hashtag always be practicing, hashtag practice not magic. And uh, Merry Christmas, and I will see you in the next video.